Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today we're going to make a cute little truffle box. I just love this sweet little treat box. We're using the Petal Park Bundle. You can bundle up Petal Park with the Petal Park Builder Punch and save 10%. And we're going to use the Coordinating Sentimental Park for our sentiment. I got this little box. It's one by two by about because of the gusset, about two and a half. And I'm using these little Utah truffles for my treat inside. There's a toffee truffle and a mint truffle. And these were um, at Costco for a while and you can pick them up at Woodman's. Look out for these, they're really good. They're individually wrapped and they're perfect for this box. Now, I've also got another one that I'm gonna do later that's got three Laffy Taffy bars in it. So just some ideas of what fits. Um, we're gonna start with a piece of cardstock that's eight by four. And there's the template. The template photo will be on the printable project sheet. The printable project sheet is at kitchentablestamper.com. There's a link directly to the post in the video um, description below. I'm using soft succulent cardstock. Now, we're using some of the in colors that will be retiring um, from this annual catalog and that we're using them on purpose so it gives me a reason to talk to you guys about um, the in colors that are about to retire and the new color refresh all right so we're going to score on the four inch side at one and rotate to the other four inch side score at one we'll pop this in on the eight inch side and we're going to score at one half at one three and a half four and a half seven and seven and a half. Um, now is the time to start looking at your colors. And sometimes I feel like um, I, if I don't beat this drum, you'll be disappointed. But if I do beat this drum, I don't mean for it to sound like hurry, hurry, hurry. And so that's why we're talking about it right now. So we're using soft succulent. Soft succulent, evening evergreen, and fresh freesia are two of the five in colors that are set to retire and the news we got yesterday from Stampin' Up! is that there is a color refresh coming in the new catalog so some of those colors could be adopted into the um, color family you know brought back uh, but we just don't know and with the color refresh Stampin' Up! had said that there are colors that are leaving to make room for returning colors and for new colors so with that said, I want to make sure that you take some time before the official announcement and check your colors. Check what do you need more cardstock, what do you need ink refills. If you love a color, now's the time to get that color and to, to replenish that color. All right, let's go ahead and cut these two rectangles out on both corners here. It's always very sad and disappointing when somebody waits until the last minute to get, say, an ink refill. They could have gotten for $4, but then it's going on the secondary market for you know $10. So just take some time right now. Look at the in colors that are retiring and look at the color families. And me particularly, I love pool party. I love crumb cake. Those are easy colors for me to work with. I love real red and old olive and night of navy. I want to make sure that my ink pads will last for a long time, and they will with a re-inker and good storage and care. So take a look now and just analyze um, what, what tools do you have, ink pads, that you want to last for a long time? Which uh, Stampin' Blends might you want a backup for, or Stampin' Write Markers? Uh, what cardstock do you want a little extra on hand? All right, so this time we're not going to cut out the two rectangles. We're going to cut down the score line. We're going to cut out the score line, get a little bevel there. And then we're going to cut off one rectangle on this side. So a little different on this side. Same thing here. Cut out the score line, cut off one rectangle. And there it is. We've cut according to the template photo. Now let's round the corners for the top of our box. I'm gonna use my handy dandy We Are Memory Keepers. 
and just fold in the sides and we're going to cut the corner we're going to rotate uh oh come on there we go and fold in the side cut the other corner and we want this tab at the end round let's do the other side the same way now to assemble this box we want to keep the tabs on the outside and then this is the back of our box all right so what we want to do here is put our tear and tape adhesive down the inside of the long rectangle that has the fold over tab all right then we also want to put tear and tape on the square adhesive tabs at the bottom of the box on the same side so this is how your adhesive will look before assembling the box i like to take the liner from the bottom tabs first and you see that it went over the edge of the tab there a little bit so i'll just remove the liner and then i will fold over the adhesive now we're going to bring the box the long rectangles in bring up the square tab now we've formed the bottom and the sides of the box now this is the back of the box we're going to bring these side tabs around and close up the box now what we've done here is we've eliminated that like speed bump along the side so when you're putting your treats in your box there is no tab on the inside to stop things up it's nice and smooth on the inside and it's nice and finished on the outside so there's the back seam our little tab folds in to give you a clean look at the top and that is the engineering of this little box it'll come together at the top and tie with some ribbon let's go ahead and add some designer series paper panels around the front and sides of the box you need two pieces that are seven eighths by two and three eighths for the sides of the box and we've got two pieces that are two and three eighths by one and seven eighths for the front and back of the box just going to put those on with some liquid glue cute right now let's mark the center and punch a hole for our ribbon I'm using a 1 8 inch circle punch and i've got a centering ruler on my simply score tool so let me bring that back in here for a second i'm gonna just lay that in between five and seven and give a good estimate as to where's center any little helper helps me sometimes i still get <laughs> my eyes are not on center but I try to at least give it a good estimate and mark it before I just take a running start with the punch so we're gonna hold our tabs together at the top here use that 1 8 inch circle and punch about where we marked we can add our truffle Close that up and bring my sample back in here. So our designer series paper is Evening Evergreen and Soft Succulent. We're gonna use the In Color Open Weave Ribbon. This is Fresh Freesia. And let's tie this up. These would be adorable little party favors, shower or wedding favors. And wait till you see how fast and easy it is going to be to decorate these using the Petal Park bundle. I love a punch bundle if you've got to uh, make a lot of something fast. We're just going to, it's funny because these were, these were pretty much my wedding colors, fresh freesia and soft succulent. These would have been cute party favors. All right, let's cut that away from the spool and this beautiful ribbon I love this ribbon these in color with the open weave really good ribbons all right now we can set this aside let's start making our decorations I've got my stamp and pierce mat because petal park is photopolymer my 
My ink pads are Soft Succulent, Evening Evergreen, Fresh Freesia, and Rich Razzleberry. Got some white cardstock, and we're going to stamp the outline of our flowers in Rich Razzleberry. Take into account the orientation of the punch. You want to make sure that you stamp in a way that's going to be very easy to maneuver into the punch and get those flowers out. Now we're going to do Fresh Freesia for the fill. I love this combination, Rich Razzleberry for the outline, Fresh Freesia for the fill. You get a nice two-tone look with different shades of similar color. And I'm going to bring in a small strip here because we're going to do the leaf. And again, we're going to pay attention to how we would feed that into the punch and we're going to stamp accordingly. I'm going to do the outline of the leaf with Evening Evergreen. We need two. Then I'm going to do the fill on the leaf with Soft Succulent, but I'm going to stamp it off so we get a real um, strong contrast between the Evening Evergreen and the Soft Succulent fill. So let's go ahead and tap off and then fill. Let the ink transfer and then tap off and fill. All right, set that aside for just a second to dry. Now I've got some basic white cardstock that I cut this little label. Love this little label. This is the small skinny label from the Stylus Shapes dies. We're gonna use a Sentimental Park stamp set. It's a coordinating bundle to the Petal Park and it's got some great mixer match greetings with some cool fonts. I love this stamp set. We're gonna grab best wishes and stamp that, oh, an evening evergreen on our little banner. Perfect fit, I love this little banner and these bitty little sentiments. All right, let's clear away the ink pads and punch. If I don't clear away the ink pads before I punch, the bits end up in the ink pads. Let's do our flowers first. Now you want to look from the back of the punch so you can line this up, right? But that doesn't mean that you don't have safe punching technique. When you punch, especially from the back of the punch, you're going to hold the punch nice and wide. It's like you've got a big juicy cheeseburger and you don't want to get any on you. Do you see how wide my hands are? And then punch. If you try to grip the punch this way, you can pinch your hands in the side of the punch. So be very careful when punching upside down. Just a little reminder. I haven't given that reminder in a while, but make sure you hold the punches wide when you're punching upside down. It's less of a hazard if you're punching this way, but when you do this to line up, be sure that you grip the punch with a wide grip and don't grab your hand. Let's bring our small grid paper back in here. I've got some vellum cardstock and this is the bow punch. We're going to punch the little sprig and the leaf. Now let's add some shimmer to this vellum. Got my wink of Stella. Love this glitter pen. And we are going to just brush the glitter onto the vellum and coat it completely. And then we'll have a beautiful shimmer white vellum. Same with the little sprig. Let's cover that in the Wink of Stella. And there it is. Gorgeous, right? Let that have just a second to dry. While that dries, let's start building our decorations. I'm going to get some mini Stampin' Dimensionals. I love these little minis. They make floral arranging very easy. I'm just going to pop a mini on the center back of each of these flowers and put my big, biggest flower first. And my greeting. My greeting is going to overlap the flowers on the best part and it's going to need a little lift on the wishes part. So we'll pop that one on there. Make sure you put it high enough so that when you add the flower to the, or the center to the flower, you've got some room. 
then your second, that kind of medium sized flower, and the little one floating up off the top. And we can take the minis and cut them in half. We're gonna put a half on each of these leaves, put it down low at the base, and then we can pop those underneath. So we've got them coming out from under the best wishes banner and under the flower. Then let's get our shimmery white vellum stems here. And we're going to just cut off the end. There's a skinny stem here. It's kind of hard to tuck and hide, so let's cut those away. Just shorten them a little bit. I got some mini glue dots here. We're going to use the take your pick tool and just fold it up. We can add it to the stem of our little bloom. We can take our little bloom and tuck it underneath the best wishes and underneath the flower. Kind of just thread it in and hide it in there. And we can take the seam, our little leaf here. I'm going to go back to my mini dimensionals and grab a half. Put that low on the stem. That under best wishes so that the mini dimensional is hidden. Now another of these glue dots. I'm going to just pick one up with the take your pick tool and pop it underneath on the flower here. Let's tack down best wishes. Make sure it's level. Looking good. Bring our sample back in here. And my favorite new embellishments. I am just really digging these flat adhesive back pearls. They're big and blingy, but they're really rather low profile, which is kind of nice. We're going to add a big one here. And then small ones for our smaller flowers. The iridescence on here, the purples and the greens that pick up and throw from these pearls are really gorgeous with the um, with the color palette that we've got here. I want to lift that one and put it above the flower. I'm kind of a master of deconstruction there. <laughs> uh, there you go. If you do that and it sticks, that's great. But if it doesn't and you want to just rearrange a little bit like I did, you can always lift a dimensional. I should show you this because it's a trick I use all the time when I just want to adjust something and just a little bit like I wanted the um, leaf to be under the flower. You can always take that dimensional if it's not as sticky as you'd like it to be because you wanted to adjust something, put a mini glue dot and then just pop your little item right back on. So sometimes you can make little changes that way. All right, there it is. There's our truffle box. If you've got any questions about the project, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. If there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, please reach out. And to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.